Um, so I um, work in a company called Le Fais Special in uh, Montpellier, France. It's a pun about special effects. It sounds kind of the same in French, uh, Le Fais Special. Um, so we work in um, uh, animation. Uh, we um, have been working on a feature film for last year. Um, and most of what we do is in uh, free software, including Blender for the 3D and uh, animation. Um, the feature film that we've been working on is uh, uh, Cutout. So um, the title of the conference is uh, uh, Cutout uh, Feature Film in uh, Blender. It's not entirely in Blender, but we um, collaborated with uh, other studios and uh, what we did was the cutout part, so uh, crowd characters. So what is cutout animation? Um, here's a demo, um, not a demo, but uh, an extract from a film uh, showcasing um, the art of Lotte Reininger, who is a um, German, I think, um, cutout uh, director from the 1930s probably, and uh, she was like the mother of this technique, and here we can see her uh, cutting out literally uh, bits of papers and uh, assembling them and making a character. Uh, in Blender, there are tools that exist to uh, help us with that, uh, such as uh, uh, Koa tools, which uh, we haven't used. <laughs> Then uh, there's, uh, there was uh, one rig by uh, Nikolai Mamashev um, based on a uh, paper character by David Revoix, uh, which served kind of as an inspiration for uh, uh, the rest of what we did. So this uh, movie is uh, called Dilili à Paris, which means Dilili in Paris. Uh, you might have guessed that even if you don't speak French. Um, it's, uh, well, it's in Paris, obviously, uh, in uh, the beginning of the 20th century. So really co colorful and uh, uh, art nouveau. Um, it involves um, a little girl, Dilili, who you can see here, uh, who is uh, from Cal uh, New Caledonia, an island, uh, a Pacific island, and she comes to Paris and meets well, she does stuff. Um, here's another image where we can see uh, the Paris Opera. Um, and these are the main characters. This is uh, the first uh, shot that we uh, uh, made. Uh, jumping straight, straight into it, it's... Uh, all of these characters were um, animated in Blender. There are many of them. It's a big shot, and uh, it was kind of <laughs> complicated uh, to uh, put put it all together. And uh, but yeah, it works. So this shot shows how um, how useful it was to use Blender because well, we we have a 3D space, which is something that. Uh, we just wouldn't have had easily um, if we had used uh, like 2D software for uh, the animation. So um, I'm, go I'm going to talk about a bit about uh, the uh, process that we went through for uh, every shot. So it starts with uh, Studio O, which is actually uh, Michel Oslo, the director. Um, but he calls himself a studio sometimes. Uh, he. Um, so he draws the, the storyboards and uh, designs, and uh, he took a um, lot of pictures in, in Paris for, uh, as a reference for the sets. Um, so it starts with him. Then he sends uh, this information to uh, another studio called Norwest in Paris, um, which uh, comprises the um, uh, set team. So they. Um, uh, paint and uh, do like yeah made paintings from uh, photo references. Then we have uh, us, Les Fais Special in Montpellier, so south. Uh, we did um, all of the layout for the film in Blender, and uh, the uh, the animation of the crowds um, that 
I'm talking about here more specifically. Uh, we exchange a lot with them, with the uh, other studio, for um, uh, how we import sets uh, as a PNG in Blender, and then uh, sometimes we render things from a camera and send it to them so that they can uh, make uh, a projection mapping sometimes. And then we work with uh, another studio who does uh, the main, uh, main animation and um, uh, yeah, 3D animation for the main characters, uh, lighting, compositing. Uh, they work in Maya, so uh, we export everything in, uh, uh, to Maya format. And the final step was um, for the sets to go to uh, MacGuff for rendering uh, through us for the um, conversion again from Blender format to uh, Maya format. So the Pantin is a uh, French pop for puppet. I cannot get myself to say uh, anything else than Pantin because I've used that term for a long, long while. Uh, so the process is we need to import textures um, from uh, Photoshop, or Krita in our case, um, and then we have to rig them. There are many, many of such characters, so we had to um, find a way to make it kind of quick. Uh, many characters. So here's what it, what it looks like when uh, it's coming from uh, Michel Oslo's designs. He draws uh, the he draws the characters, and uh, we have a, a template which we uh, uh, we use to uh, make sure that the character f uh, fits at the right scale, so that he, he's not Godzilla or something. And uh, so we uh, resize the character. We have um, uh, we have a frame from the storyboard to uh, serve as a reference for um, coloring. Uh, which we do afterwards. Then uh, you can see we draw lines around the uh, limbs and joints, and then we cut out, well, digitally, but we don't use paper anymore. Um, we cut out uh, each of the limb parts, and then we have this. Uh, this is not what it looks like in the film. <laughs> So as you can see, there are many characters. This is a um, presentation that we made like about a year ago, I think, and there are many more characters added to that. Uh, one thing I'd like to um, insist on is that um, in this really fast uh, sequence, you can see some characters are the same multiple times, but with different colors, and we could add many more variations to uh, the movie, to the uh, crowd, uh, using this uh, principle. So um, this is just to show that uh, the whole team uh, had the opportunity to appear in the film, which is something that in animation is, I don't know if it's the, sen the standard, but anyway, you may recognize some of, uh, some of us in this slide. <laughs> I don't have my, I don't wear my scarf right now. But. Uh, so what tools did we use? Um, 2D animation tools by, uh, sorry Jasper, I can't say your name. Uh, but we um, uh, used this tool which uh, allows one to uh, import from a, a Photoshop PSD format into Blender. Uh, this is uh, what it looks like, it's really quick. Um, and it's uh, really useful to have uh, the, um, each of the limbs I was uh, talking about uh, at the right uh, position in, uh, in the 3D space. Then we used Rigify, which is, of course, extensible since it's, uh, well, free software. We forked it from GitHub. Uh, Lucio made a, Lucio made a, um, a presentation uh, yesterday saying that we shouldn't do that, but we did it anyway because we didn't know it wasn't the proper way. Uh, and we modified it um, quite heavily to fit our needs for cutout animation, which are, uh, well, very different from uh, 3D uh, normal stuff. Uh, so this is a demonstration of uh, uh, our rig, uh, which 
you may or may not recognize uh, Rigify here, but uh, it's, uh, uh, as I said, a customization of Rigify. So it's, it's the same principles, but just not the same rigs. And uh, well, this is, this is sped up a bit, but uh, it allows one to uh, create a fully rigged character in like five minutes instead of one day, which is uh, nice when you have 1,000 or, I don't know, 500 characters to make uh, in a movie. Then uh, we have another tool which was useful for um, uh, adding variation to this crowd, this uh, very colorful Paris uh, 1900 crowd, which uh, I designed, which I called uh, material t tuning. Uh, which is a bit of a joke because in French it means like uh, sorry it means like uh, car customization and it's uh, really vulgar <laughs> kind of stuff but this is not so this is how it works uh, you select a, a plane and you have this uh, interface with the uh, color customization uh, kind of standard things for um, um, color grading and stuff, and which, which we can then apply to the whole character at once. And this was useful for adjustments uh, to some characters. Ooh. Um, this is really short. Uh, this is the first time that we've been presenting images from the movie, so uh, kind of a uh, Blender conference exclusivity. Um, as you can see, it's 3D, but all, all of the characters that we did, uh, which are the background characters, are uh, cut out, but it, re it works really well in, in Blender. And, and this is uh, the final look as um, rendered and rendered in Maya, not by us, uh, and then composited. Uh, ah, the movie is going out in 2018, so... Uh, well, you'll have to wait. <laughs> so a bit about the pipeline. Uh, as I said, we uh, communicated with another studio who used Maya. And so we had to uh, come, out with way, come up with ways uh, to uh, export from Blender. Uh, this was 2016, so we, there was Alambic kind of, but uh, we couldn't really use it, use it. So we used the FBX, and this was, um, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm hurtful, but this was a bit of a pain. Um, because some functionality were, uh, was missing. So we had to export actually many file, a uh, JSON file for uh, uh, storing info about the various other files that we export. So an FBX for the camera, an FBX for the object, and sometimes several FBX for the objects. Then uh, animation cache uh, for uh, uh, the layout 3D animation for in Maya. Then we had a, a sound file uh, so that uh, further animators could uh, have the same uh, sound as, uh, as us. This is what the JSON file looks like. It's, uh, it's been simplified for this presentation, but you can see that there are many files such as uh, one FBX for uh, the sets, uh, one other for the other kind of sets, one for the layout, then you have some properties. And this was, well, a workaround, uh, a workaround that we came up with and it was, it worked. <laughs> um, the, I think the most difficult part was scripting the other side in Maya uh, because I just don't like to do that. Uh, Luckily, uh, I don't have to anymore uh, most of the time. So yeah, this is uh, the same slide as before, but just to have a, uh, a clear idea what I was uh, uh, referring to, uh, the FBX export is this part, the last part. And it took time. <laughs> so what's next for this? Uh, um, rig uh, project. Uh, we've been developing this for the Dilili movie, but we're going to continue using it. So uh, we, we're developing um, further features. 
So we, um, we've added uh, deformation because uh, up until now, uh, none, none of the limbs could be deformed, uh, in, like uh, as in uh, skinning. So this uh, tool uh, is an automatic tessellation add-on, which uh, works, <laughs> which is always good. <coughs> And uh, you can see automatic um, way, weighting, weighing of uh, of the mesh, which uh, which is 2D. It's just a flat uh, plane, but it's going to be useful for uh, uh, smooth joints in some uh, in some characters. So this is an example of a, a, a new project that we are working on. And uh, as you can see, the wings of this character are, uh, well, deformable. And uh, this helps us a lot for uh, such kind of, um, uh, well, rigging, like uh, for tails or some situations. <laughs> then we have uh, FK, because for uh, all of this uh, uh, one year uh, and a half project, we didn't have FK. so. Uh, I made an uh, IKFK switch, which is, of course, uh, standard in, in 3D rigify, but not in this rig. Uh, so this is the same character as before, and uh, I um, upgraded it so that it um, it can have a FK. This uh, I'm showing several features. We uh, we have a uh, a tool for moving automatically all of the objects from the character in two different layers, which is a pain to do uh, manually. Um, we can uh, show everything at once or hide everything at once, uh, make things not selectable or selectable. So this is yeah still pretty standard, but. As I said, it works. <laughs> uh, on the right, you can see the um, standard Rigify interface, which was slightly customized with um, little hands to select uh, whole limbs, which is something that uh, wasn't in Rigify. So we can add things and hopefully uh, make a pull request someday. Um, then, uh, yeah, this is the snapping. Uh, FK, IK, I was uh, referring to, for uh, all limbs. We have a foot roll. Ah, that's not the foot roll. This one is a bit peculiar because she has a dress, so she's got kind of four legs. This is obscene. Um, it's uh, free software, <laughs> yeah, since it's a GPL uh, uh, fork from uh, Rigify, so you can find the sources online on github.com slash this. Just watch the uh, presentation again if you want to check it out. Um, some more images from the film. Uh, and I'd like to thanks to thank Michel Oslo, the director, and also uh, Mars, who is uh, the distributor who allowed us to show these images today, and the other studio, Norwest and McGuff. Thanks. <laughs> That's me. So uh, I don't think uh, I can take questions. I don't know. Eight minutes. Mm, ten minutes. Ten minutes question. That's well, that's stressful. <laughs> um, is there any question? Cool. For the questions, I have a microphone. If someone has a question. Mm, yeah, we. You can. Uh, <laughs> You can uh, come talk to us if you have got something to say about uh, the this process. Thanks.